The patient is positioned lateral on a beanbag with the operative side up. An axillary roll is put in place to protect the brachial plexus. To find the fibular head, follow the patellar tendon to the tibial tuberosity and the fibular head will be in line with this structure. Here, the location of the fibular head as well as the tendon of the biceps femoris are marked. The common peroneal nerve, also known as the common fibular nerve, lies posterior to the fibular head and lateral to the fibular neck. A 4 to 5 centimeter curvilinear incision posterior to the fibular head and lateral to the fibular neck will provide adequate access to the nerve. The leg is then prepped and draped and local anesthetic is infiltrated subcutaneously taking care to avoid injection deep enough to contact the nerve. The skin and dermis is sharply opened with a 15 blade exposing subcutaneous fat. Dissection is carried through this layer using Metzenbaum scissors to create a plane that is then elevated away to protect the nerve and subsequently opened using Bovi monopolar electrocautery. This allows for exposure of the nerve sheath, which is carefully lifted away from the nerve and sharply opened with scissors. Tenotomy scissors are used to circumferentially dissect around the nerve, which is then marked with a blue vessel loop. This dissection is carried proximally in the leg. The nerve sheath that can be directly visualized is safe to cut, while additional nerve sheath can be divided by positioning the scissors and then pushing without closing. This allows the decompression to be carried several centimeters beyond the skin incision. Attention is then turned to the distal portion of the nerve. One of the primary sources of entrapment is the fascia investing and beneath the peroneus longus. This fascia is first dissected away from the underlying muscle and nerve and then sharply divided, taking care to cut only the fascia and leaving most muscle fibers intact. This helps prevent bleeding and minimizes pain and morbidity from the procedure. Once this fascia is open, the muscle is retracted and fascia deep to muscle is also opened. The individual branches of the common peroneal nerve are then dissected and isolated. The recurrent genicular or articular branch, shown here, courses towards the superior tibiofibular joint. Once isolated, each branch is marked with a yellow vessel loop. The next branch is the superficial perineal branch, which supplies muscles of eversion. Finally, the deep perineal nerve is most easily located behind the superficial branch as it courses to supply muscles of dorsiflexion. Here we demonstrate the common perineal nerve or perineal nerve proper the articular or recurrent genicular branch as it courses to innervate the superior tibiofibular joint, the deep perineal nerve, and finally the superficial perineal nerve. The wound is then copiously irrigated with bacitracin irrigation and hemostasis is obtained with bipolar electrocautery.
The wound is then closed in two layers. First, the dermis is closed using 3O vicral sutures thrown in an inverted fashion to bury the knot. The skin is then closed with a subcuticular 3O monocryl stitch. This stitch is initiated by coming through the skin to the apex of the incision. Prior to the first throw, the thread is wrapped around the needle twice. Pulling the thread exiting from the skin helps to bury this first knot. To complete closure, the final stitch is thrown, bringing the needle through the apex, but prior to pulling the needle through the skin, the thread is again wrapped around the needle tip twice. As the thread is pulled through, adds and pickups can be used to feed the knot down prior to burying the knot. The incision is then covered with Steri strips, Curlex, and an ACE wrap. No bracing is required and the patient is allowed to bear weight immediately.